everyone, Kyle Erickson here. This is the Oppo Reno 8 Pro, and after a month of using this, it is not what I expected. As many of you might already know, I am predominantly an iPhone user, and on occasion, I'll dip my toes back into Android for specific things. But for the last month, I've been trying to use the Reno 8 Pro for as many things as possible. In my head, I had an idea of what this experience would be like, but I turned out to be wrong both positively and negatively. So with that said, let's just dive in and break everything down. The first thing I'll mention here is the design. I brought this up in my initial unboxing video, so we won't get too deep into the weeds here, but the design of this phone is definitely one of its strong suits. You've got this unibody construction, meaning that the glass on the back is all one piece from the base up to the camera bump. It's got an aluminum housing and it's super light, weighing in at only 183 grams. It's only about 20 grams heavier than my iPhone, which is smaller in size. And for a bigger phone like this, it's a lot more comfortable, especially over long periods of time. The camera bump is a big part of that, as I find that my finger usually rests just on the ridge of that bump and it seems to take some of the pressure off the bottom of my hand. And in my opinion, it makes it feel a little bit lighter. It also doesn't show fingerprints super easily, at least for a glass back. And I think a large part of that is because of the lighter color. Uh, this version is called glazed green and I wasn't sure about it at first. I often find that with bright colors, I like them for about a week. And then I wish that I would have gone with something less flashy like black or white, but I do still like this green. And I think that's because it does fit into a lot of different spaces without it sticking out too much. There's also a black color if you'd prefer that, but in any case, they did a really good job with the look of this especially making that camera bump fit in nicely and add to the ergonomics of the phone a little. Uh, the camera lenses look fantastic as well, and I've actually had people comment on how good they look. I do wonder if the design around those lenses does sacrifice a little bit of functionality for looks, but I will touch on that in a bit. If you flip it over, you'll notice that the Reno 8 Pro has super thin bezels with a screen to body ratio of 93.4%. So that screen fills out most of the surface area, which looks exceptionally sharp. The display is a 6.7 inch 1080 by 2412 resolution AMOLED panel, has a 120 hertz refresh rate and supports HDR10+. I really like this screen. The 120 hertz refresh rate makes this super smooth to navigate around and scroll on, and it gets reasonably bright, peaking between 800 and 950 nits, so totally viewable outdoors during the day. It's great for watching content with it being a 10-bit display with decent color accuracy, and very smooth with great performance with any gaming that I've done. Uh, speaking of performance, this is one of those areas I was talking about that surprised me a little bit about this phone. Uh, the Reno 8 Pro contains a MediaTek Dimensity 8100 Max chipset. Uh, like I said, my daily driver is usually an iPhone, and I sprinkle some Android devices in here and there to do specific tasks. But the last time I was a hardcore Android user was almost two years ago now. And I think somewhere in the back of my head, I've been a little bit apprehensive about using a MediaTek chipset just from my past experiences a long time ago, but this thing kind of has turned that around for me. With anything performance related, this has been fantastic. I haven't had any bugs or issues with the apps that I use regularly and everything has been really snappy and quick. Now, this phone also has 12 gigs of RAM, so there's probably way more than I need in most instances. Uh, it's benchmarked well in all the tests that I've run, and gaming has been smooth as butter. The same goes for apps that historically have been a little bit power hungry and warmed up a lot of my previous devices. Uh, on the Reno 8 Pro, they're very quick, and because of the five nanometer process on the Dimensity chip and the ultra conductive cooling system, this thing rarely ever gets hot or shows any significant significant power draw, even with the settings cranked up in games. Everything on here is running on Android 12 and ColorOS 12.1, which for the most part has been a good experience with a few minor hiccups. I find the OS in a general sense looks good and operates fine. There's a lot in here that works very well. 
I've been quite impressed with the in-display fingerprint reader. It's super fast and I've had absolutely no issues with it. But the face unlock has been hit or miss for me. Because I wear contacts and glasses frequently, my face isn't always consistent and it seems to have trouble when I have my glasses on, especially in low light. So I generally use the fingerprint scanner a lot more. I do, however, love the lock screen photos that it cycles through by default and the level of customization that you have with a phone. When you pick a wallpaper, you can use the wallpaper color picking for all your UI buttons and callouts, which I like. And you do have font customization, which I would like to see improved. There aren't a ton of great fonts to select from. And if you move away from Roboto, I just find that the font weight in apps doesn't behave correctly. So I just keep things on the default typeface. On top of that, even if you do want to use another font other than Roboto or Oppo Sends, you have to download it from this Oppo font app. And I just find that this app and the themes app is a bit strange as they do have some weird permission and account requirements. It does kind of cheapen the feel of the operating system a little bit, along with the other Oppo branded apps included on the phone. I just wish that those weren't there at all. But outside of that, there is decent customization options for icons, fingerprint animations, and ColorOS generally feels pretty clean. Uh, not really any huge surprises there, but probably the biggest surprise with this phone is the camera system. This was an interesting one. The main camera on here is a 50 megapixel sensor that's on a lot of flagship phones this year, so it's certainly capable. In daylight, it produces good images, maybe a little bit soft here and there, but respectable nonetheless. In portrait mode, it does an awesome job of separating the subject from the background, both on the main camera and on the 32 megapixel front facing camera, even with a lack of a depth sensor. With whatever camera lens that you're using on the Reno 8 Pro, nothing is overly saturated, which is a bonus on a lot of phones in this category. You see really blown out unnatural colors, and this has a nice balance of bringing out colors without dialing them up too much. Having said that, a lot of the marketing for this phone has been around the Mara Silicone X imaging NPU. that's supposed to improve the image, especially in low light photos and video. And I don't know that that really lives up to what I was expecting. I've tested this out quite a bit and you can get decent results in low light, but I found that every once in a while the camera app would just lay a dud and it wouldn't use night mode properly. It was pretty rare, but the more concerning thing to me was the lens flaring that you get if you're out in an urban setting and there's a lot of surrounding lights. This seemed to be a lot worse than what I've been used to on other phones, and I can't help but think that it might have something to do with the borders around the lenses and maybe some glare hitting them and reflecting the light weirdly. I could be way off base there, but whatever it is, it does seem to be flaring a little bit more at night for me. Outside of the front and main camera, you have an eight megapixel ultra wide lens, which can take decent shots, but not anything to write home about. And there's also a two megapixel macro lens. I'm not sure that is all that useful unless you're using it to read labels with really small text or something. Uh, I likely wouldn't end up using either of those lenses for the most part, and I'd just stick with the main and the front sensors. When it comes to video, I'd say performance there is also so-so. You do get 4K at 30 frames per second, so no 4K 60 frames per second, which I do find a bit curious considering the internals on this are flagship quality. And it's only got electronic stabilization, which I find is a bit janky at times. At night, it does do a great job of bringing out the scene and the colors, but it also suffers from this weird pulsing effect, which I think is from the electronic stabilization. But whatever it is, it's extremely distracting. Overall, I think that the camera system for me leaves a lot to be desired. You can find mid-range phones with high-res main sensors that have optical image stabilization, uh, higher resolution ultra-wides, and macros with depth sensors. I think that they could have tweaked this camera system a little bit and provided a little more value there, or just focus less on marketing the camera system as a main feature. I don't want this to be all doom and gloom here though. There are a lot more positives to take away from this phone. As far as wireless connectivity, I mentioned this in my unboxing video, but the Wi-Fi connection in this phone consistently outperforms a lot of my devices in terms of speed and performance. And all of my Bluetooth devices paired up and worked outstanding with no connection drops or sync issues. I'll often throw on videos or podcasts with my Bluetooth headphones 
headphones on, uh, the range is outstanding, and when my headphones are disconnected and I'm just using the built-in speakers, the audio is decent there as well. The stereo speakers get quite loud. They're not out of this world or anything in terms of quality, but everything is very clear and nothing is muffled or tinny. Uh, they're more than capable for just casually listening to or watching content. Last but not least, the battery life. The Reno 8 Pro comes with a 4500 milliamp hour battery, so not the biggest for this size of phone, but it does perform really well. I can use this for well over a day without charging it with the display at 120 hertz with a combination of resource heavy and light usage. And on the plus side, this does have 80 watt charging, which can charge us from zero to 100 in 40 minutes or so. Unfortunately for me, the model that I have here has the UK charger, so I've never been able to properly test this, but it does charge quick enough with the quick charges that I've got kicking around here. But regardless, the dimensity chipset in here does a great job of optimizing battery life and power usage. As a whole, I think that the real strength of the Oppo Reno 8 Pro is the premium design and construction combined with that Dimensity chipset and the 12 gigs of RAM that produces amazing performance. I know that there's a lot of marketing geared towards the camera system here, but Honestly, I don't think that you're buying this for its cameras, but rather the things that I just mentioned. You've got a fantastic display, great battery life, and a few quirks here and there in the software that I'd get rid of, like Oppo branded apps and sign-in requirements, but overall this has been great to use, and I think if you're looking for a performant phone, maybe you're playing games or multitasking with resource-heavy apps, this phone can do all those things extremely well. And just don't expect too much out of this camera system and you'll be fine. That's it for me today. I'll likely be switching back to my iPhone full time and I'm probably gonna have an iPhone 14 here to check out sometime this month. So stay tuned for more phone reviews. If you have any questions about this phone, drop those in the comments below. And I'd also love to hear from everyone on what your favorite mid-range phone is and why. If you found enjoyment in this video, hit that like button. If you wanna see more tech-related content or if you want to start a homemade t-shirt company with me in a van down by the river, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.